welcome. We've got more news and a little extra. I'm Sabrina Salas Matanani. Tonight, we are continuing our introductions of the governor's cabinet, putting some faces to the names you've heard over the last several weeks. Tonight's cabinet meeting focuses on various areas of the government, including the Department of Public Health and Social Services, Department of Labor, Education, and the Economy. Appointed as Director of Public Health, Linda DeNorsey worked up the ranks, serving more than 20 years of the agency. She was the Health Services Administrator for 12 years. She also wrote grants that brought in millions of dollars that were critical. These grants also increased medical capacity. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Biology degree from University of San Francisco and a Master's in Public Health degree from San Jose State University. Joining her as Deputy Director is Leo Casill, former financial manager and has the expertise to help manage the tens of millions in resources to provide public health and social services to thousands on the island. Previously, he was the Deputy Director of Catholic Social Services. He served in the private sector since 1983, leading his own company and working as the controller of Calvo Enterprises. He started his career in 1969 in the U.S. Navy, then joined public service in 1973 as a statistician with the Department of Commerce. He worked his way up, becoming Deputy Director of the Bureau of Budget and Management Research, Special Assistant to the Governor for Federal Programs and Director of Administration. He holds a Bachelor of Business Administration degree from the University of Portland and Master of Business Administration degree from the University of Guam. Also with us tonight is Vince Leon Guerrero, who is the Education Advisor. He retired as Guam's longest serving Associate Superintendent of Special Education. Under his leadership, numerous programs were developed. He served three times on the negotiating team for the Department of Education's Collective Bargaining Agreement, twice as chief negotiator. He retired in 2005, after 33 years of service to the government. Most recently, he worked at Guam Cedars. He holds a Bachelor in Social Service degree from San Jose State University and a Master's in Social Work degree from the University of Hawaii, Manoa. Governor Special Assistant for Economic Affairs, Henry Titano, has a wide range of experience in economic and operations matters. He was a program management analyst at Matrix Design Group. He has also worked at GITA as an industry development specialist and as the chief financial officer for Icon Corporation. Titano was a member of the Calvo Tenorio Transition Team, co-chairing the Subcommittee on Customer Service and Government Operations. He is a co-founding member of the Guam Chamber of Commerce's Guam Young Professionals Committee and helped to write its Blueprint for Progress project. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Tourism Services from Arizona State College and a Bachelor of Science degree in Accounting from the University of Phoenix. And finally, Department of Labor Director Leabeth Nahalawa joins us in studio. She was the Administrator of the University of Guam's Career Development Office and was with the University for 10 years. In this role, she helped place countless students, graduates, and alumni in exciting careers through workshops and internships. Ms. Nahalawa was, has a Bachelor of Arts in Communication degree and a Master's of Public Administration from the University of Guam. She is presently working on her doctoral dissertation in Educational Leadership in Higher Education from Argozi University. Unfortunately, Denorsi and Casil were unable to join us this evening. Now, if you'd like to chime in on our discussion and ask a question to our guests, feel free to give us a call at 632-TALK. That is 632-8255. Thank you all for joining Thank us you. tonight. Thank you. First, um, how were you approached or did you apply for the job and why did you, did you accept the position? Leah. My name was thrown in mm -hmm. and then um, after, I think, two weeks, um, I was interviewed, initial interview, mm -hmm. and then I was asked to submit my resume. And then uh, I waited for two weeks for another interview, and then another weeks for the governor to call. So that's, that's how. So yeah. when the, you got the call, how excited were you? I'm very excited because the governor said, I would be honored if you join my cabinet. And you know, what can you say when the governor say I would be honored? Of course, I'm more than honored to serve. I told him I'm more than honored to serve our island, and I'm honored to work with him. Yeah. And for me, uh, Governor Kawu uh, asked to meet with several educators to provide some ideas regarding you know, uh, how to improve education on Guam. And during the course of the, that discussion, he talked about this brand new position. At that time, I didn't think that I was interested in doing it. Uh, and then as uh, time went on and election was over, I was asked to consider the position by several friends. And I wasn't sure if there was uh, something that I really wanted to do. And uh, took, took some time to think about it, submitted my application, and was really surprised when I got the call that the governor wanted me to join him, uh, become the special assistant chief education advisor. 
on all matters education. Okay. Um, the governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and I, uh, we had started discussing economic opportunities for businesses on Guam um, throughout the election. And uh, after the general, um, I actually, you know, w was um, considering a lot of private sector opportunities. Um, but I guess the call of duty was, I guess, um, extended to me and uh, through the chief of staff and, and the governor, um, really asking me to, to consider service to the community. And, um, you know, I thought it was an opportunity of a lifetime uh, to just be involved in, in doing something great, you know, with a great team. So, You've been on the job for, uh, what, three weeks or so? What have you found so far going in? Or a lot of things. <laughs> A lot of, you know, in, in, in my area, um, there's a lot of uh, systems that, um, that, I, that, I'm, that I'm faced with right now, challenges also, uh, systems that's supposed to be in place, but it's not there that I'm trying to, um, not necessarily fix, but enhance and make it more, um, you know, uh, so that it's, it's, it's more, it can work for everybody, you know, to, to make it better for us to serve our customers and, you know, for, for our clients to be more comfortable in our services. What about you, Vince? Well, for me, the, with the three largest agencies, DOE, GCC, and UOG, comprising greater than half of the general <coughs> fund budget, mm -hmm. um, and the primary issues of cash and allotment releases, the governor was really, really um, uh, he had a really Cheshire grin when he said, you know, Vince, you're going to be the guy caught between the rock and the hard place, a request for cash, and the challenges of providing the cash necessary for all the critical services. Um, there's that, and then, of course, the other pressing issue, which is the error grants, and uh, really, really pressing. So it's, it's a lot of urgent issues that are competing for time and attention. I, I find that very uh, uh, challenging at this point. Uh, it's up to us to try to make sure that those issues are addressed within all the, uh, the needs, the military <coughs> buildup, labor issues, mm -hmm. um, and the health and safety issues. So it's, it's really, really important that uh, this position is, is at that uh, level in order to be able to uh, make sure that the uh, critical issues are addressed in a timely fashion. Uh, for me, it's, it's been exciting. Um, there, there's a lot of, um, you know, stories out there about our current financial state, um, but uh, some of the opportunities that we're looking at down the road are exciting to look at. I think we just have a very capable um, and hardworking uh, team in place uh, with in, in the senior staff and, and on the cabinet level. And, uh, you know, we kind of take that direction from the governor and lieutenant governor and chief of staff who are all, you know, very capable and hardworking individuals who genuinely care about, you know, the economic uh, areas of interest for our island. And, uh, you know, in part of touching the economy, we also have to address poverty. You know, that's not lost on this administration, the struggles of our everyday, um, you know, Romanians and, and what they're trying to do and, and helping create uh, real, real opportunities for them to succeed as well, not just the businesses that we serve, but also the, the community that we serve. So it's, it's, it's a very exciting time for us, and uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. We have a caller on the line, Victor, Victoriano from, from Mong Mong. Welcome to KWM News Extra. Saluru Praugu, Pratori Sandri Ganani Mangayi, Jan Hafade. Praugu Sti, Senior Vince Leon Guerrero. E question no wini nai, ko un sopopoti i dukasyon samoru, ko para una zude mispin samoru po fangay, kwatu, wini na sakan. Sa pure rason nai, i Board of Education Policy, ti ma atendi i maestro zina mispin samoru. Haga sa mga disatendi, dasta kipago na gatalotu na bill po using di 31-32 para ufamanay mas fwetsa. Lo hafa na haga sa mga disatendi isti, wadunuko lang Mr. Vince Longuer sa tunga na kapasaw, ben haluma, kusino na zure yung maestro sa maestro sa moro, i-consisti public law 21-34. You understood what he was saying. Yes, he's expressing his concerns that Tomorrow language teachers um, have not really been given their proper resources, in particular uh, classrooms, separate individual classrooms, which I'm kind of aware of. And I know that especially in the central and northern schools where overcrowding is an issue, that uh, this could be a, a, a difficult problem. 
And so it, it comes down to the construction of uh, additional school facilities so we can reduce the population of students that are in there so that there is enough space to provide a separate classroom for each Chamorro language teacher. And those are things that will be challenging, especially in these times with the, uh, you know, the situation of just trying to make sure that we can meet the full payroll uh, of uh, all the DOE employees. But it's certainly something that the Board of Education, especially the uh, five members that the governor will be appointing or has appointed, as well as the rest of the existing board members will be facing in the 2012 budget and the budgets beyond that. As Henry was saying, as the uh, financial condition improves, I'm sure that that's something that the Board of Ed will be addressing. Uh, it's difficult to make any commitments and promises now given the, uh, the overcrowding situation and the difficulty in providing um, classrooms for even regular classroom teachers. I understand that some teachers right now have to relocate just because there isn't enough space. We're going to take our first commercial break, but stay tuned. We'll continue.